Okay. 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 Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, this latest uh, Q&A with the executive leadership team of ELD. Thank you, everyone who uh, is here, and also thank you to those people who got in touch earlier and have provided us with some questions. Um, just to give you a, an idea of how today is going to work, I'm going to ramble on for a little bit just to give some people to, an opportunity to uh, arrive, uh, just in case anyone's rushing from their office or well, their kitchen. Uh, and uh, then Irfan is going to give a little introduction just to say hello to everyone, and then we'll get cracking on answering your questions. The Q&A is open, and I'll be watching that. So while, uh, while the questions are being asked and answered, if you do want to throw anything into uh, the Q&A section, I will make sure that we get to everything before the end of the session. Uh, let's have a look. How are we doing? Fabulous. We are filling up. So, uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's uh, hand over to Erfan. Thank you very much, Mark, and uh, welcome uh, to our parents uh, for joining us this evening for the COVID-19 Q&A. Uh, thank you very much for giving up your time this evening uh, and for the questions that have been posted already, which we will go through. Uh, and this is an opportunity for you to ask uh, questions. Uh, I hope that the communication that we have provided uh, over the past months, weeks, year <laughs> has, been, uh, has been useful to you. Uh, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for your continued support, uh, for your continued um, support of what we're doing here at college and of course for your, for your children and how you have continued to ensure that uh, we can, can, we can provide that uh, first class education to our students, albeit uh, remotely. We've been impressed at how our students have responded uh, to the pandemic and of course we, how you have responded as well. And I know it hasn't been easy uh, if you've been homeschooling, if you've got younger children at home, etc. Uh, and that hasn't been easy and we can appreciate that and understand that. Uh, but we are delighted now that we can go back to school uh, on Monday the 8th of March uh, and that we can return to some form of normality. Uh, the government has said that the uh, schools will reopen on the 8th of March, uh, and so we're using that time uh, in order to do our testing uh, and to make sure that everything is COVID safe and secure for the safe return of all of our students, both boarding and day, uh, to ensure that we can return to face-to-face -face teaching on the Tuesday. But I am. Uh, very, very grateful uh, to all of you, and in particular to my uh, leadership team, uh, the leadership team who've worked tirelessly uh, over this past year uh, to ensure that uh, you are informed uh, of all the updates and what we've been doing uh, for up to supporting our students as well, not only uh, at home, but obviously uh, here in boarding. And we've had a number of students stay with us uh, since September, uh, oh, throughout the Christmas period as well, uh, who've enjoyed uh, our hospitality, to say the least, uh, and my thanks to all of them for the seamless switch to remote learning, uh, to the pastoral and uh, mental health uh, care that we have provided as well, uh, and of course uh, to all the staff from, uh, who have continued to uh, teach online uh, and provide both pastoral and uh, academics uh, to our students. Uh, but I'd also like to thank you as well for being patient uh, to parents who have uh, supported the school as well, uh, and we look forward to a very safe and secure return on Monday. Mark. Thank you, Afan. Um, so I will be going through uh, some of the questions initially that have been asked in advance. Um, I did want to just preface this by saying a couple of the leadership team have slightly uh, intermittent internet connections. So if anyone drops off, I'll try and make sure I uh, come back round to. Uh, finish off any answers that uh, we haven't got to. Um, what I think I will start with, and I think this is probably what's on most people's minds, is the, the questions that we've had in around COVID and around the return to college. Um, so the first question is about uh, Monday and the return on Monday. Um, the, the question is, uh, was there a rationale or a reasoning for having the testing on this Monday uh, as the first day that we're allowed to go back in? Um, why did the college uh, 
choose to have testing on Monday. Uh, I think that's probably uh, for Erfan. Thank you very much, Mark. Yes, and the schools officially reopen uh, next week on Monday, the 8th of March. And we use this week uh, to test all our boarders uh, and our house staff and our catering staff and cleaners as well. Uh, and of course, they've, uh, they've formed a bubble uh, at, the, at the college. Uh, now, we've followed the guidance so as to keep everybody uh, safe and to minimise disruption. Uh, and if we tested uh, this week, uh, say the day students uh, and staff, etc., uh, on the Thursday or Friday, uh, there may be uh, a chance that people could pick up the virus uh, over the weekend. So in order to minimise that risk, uh, staff will be tested uh, over the, uh, the weekend and they've received uh, their test kit. I received mine uh, today. I hope you can see that. That's the COVID test and I'll be doing my test uh, over the weekend. Uh, and then making sure that the results are passed on to NHS Track and Trace uh, and to uh, the school. Uh, this will also allow staff now who have tested over the weekend to assist with the student testing uh, on Monday, and that seemed to be the most safest way forward. Many schools are using next week to test their cohorts uh, and to start teaching later, uh, but of course the health and safety of our staff and students is paramount, and this seemed to be the most safest and, uh, and lowest risk uh, with regards to return to school uh, for us. Thank you, Erfan. Um, a follow-up question on uh, self-isolation and uh, the self-isolation rules that are going to be put in place. If a student is uh, listed as a, a close contact of a student or a staff member who has tested positive, um, what are the what are the self-isolation rules that they're going to be under? Uh, this this is probably uh, this is probably for Gareth actually. Um, if they become a contact, they're identified to contact, they need to isolate for 10 days. Um, other members of the household can do not need to isolate at that point. They can continue going to work or, or wherever they go to. The only time that would change if you, if you can become a contact of subsequently developed symptoms and test positive for a, through a PCR test. That's the uh, reason why the other members of the household will need to isolate. So ultimately, if you're a contact, you isolate for 10 days immediately. And after you finish those that 10 days, you can come back to school. Lovely. Thank you. And just to follow up on that, and this has come from the, the Q&A, are the self-isolation rules, uh, and I'm assuming this also relates to uh, borders returning, um, are the rules different for students who have already received uh, the vaccine? I can take that one, Mark. Um, so if they've already had the vaccine, they're coming from another country, they would need to still do the isolation for 10 days, taking a test on day two and day eight. Uh, if they're not coming from a red list country, they can do the day five test for an early release once they get back a negative test. If they've got the vaccine, they should still do the LFT tests uh, because you can still catch it. It's just a case of the symptoms wouldn't get you so strongly. You can still pass it on even if you aren't actually showing any symptoms. So if you've had the vaccine, you should still take the test. And LFT test, that's the lateral flow test that we're using in college for the students and the teachers on uh, the uh, weekly basis. Um, so with the testing, um, what is the timetable and the schedule for the, for the student testing? I can take that one, Mark. Lovely. Yes, uh, on Monday, uh, we'll all the student staff will have tested over the weekend with their test kits which were sent at home this week. Uh, so students have been sent appointments. We have the years uh, 11, 13 and 14 uh, in the morning uh, and in the afternoon we've got years uh, 9, 10 and 12 uh, and then we will resume uh, teaching on Tuesday. Teaching will still continue albeit remotely on Monday uh, while uh, teachers are uh, supporting our students and getting tested. Uh, and then we will continue with face-to-face uh, -face teaching uh, on Tuesday. Uh, we will still continue to have our FTP live assembly and tutor period on the Monday. Uh, and we will also have a staff briefing, albeit remotely, uh, on Monday as well. Uh, the subsequent testing uh, will continue while we're in school. Uh, and so the students will have an appointment uh, and they will come out of class, be tested and then return to class. If they uh, test negative, that's absolutely fine. If they test positive and uh, we will then uh, make sure that they are isolated and then are returned home if they're a day student or if they're boarding uh, to return to the boarding house. 
uh, we will obviously then contact you uh, and let you know what is happening. But with transmission rates rapidly decreasing uh, in the UK and, and of course in London and hospital admissions due to COVID falling and with over 20 million uh, of the UK adult population now vaccinated, uh, there's plenty to be opt optimistic uh, about right now. Uh, remember, we all returned uh, back in September 2020 uh, when uh, infection rates were uh, on the rise uh, and we continued to uh, operate as a very safe and secure uh, COVID environment. We didn't uh, have to close at the college at any point uh, because of an outbreak, because there was no outbreak. Uh, and so with transmission rates decreasing, with um, uh, more and more of the adult population now being vaccinated, that we're in a much better place now. And I'm very confident that the processes and procedures that are in place now will keep the uh, college community safe. And of course, we have testing now as part of our armory, uh, so we can find out uh, very quickly if someone has uh, the virus, whether they're asymptomatic or not. Uh, and so we can then uh, continue to remain uh, safe. Obviously, if uh, your son or daughter is displaying symptoms at home, keep them at home. Please don't send them into college uh, and then order a test, which can be done uh, through uh, your local network. Lovely, thank you. So there will be a regular appointment that students will be for the period of testing excused from class or it'll be in a, a, a point where they aren't in class and they'll come in for the test, take the test and then return to whatever they were doing for the day. That's correct, Mark. And we will do that uh, on three occasions, Monday and then three or uh, five days later and then three and five days later again. So that's a total of three tests. By that time, the students will know how to do the testing. They will then have home kits, which they will then test at home. But remember, testing is voluntary, but we do encourage everybody to take the test, the entire DLD community, staff and students, uh, in order to keep the whole of the school safe. Lovely, thank you. Um, I'm going to switch slightly over to uh, some questions about how academics are going to be working. Obviously, um, along with the announcements of the roadmap out of uh, lockdown, there were a few uh, announcements about uh, examinations and how assessments are going to be taken. So we've got a couple of questions about the academic part of the school year and the assessments to go with that. Um, so the first question is, uh, when will studies be resuming? Uh, the question here is particularly for year, year 12, but I guess across the board. Um, Marido, when, when are we getting back into the swing of things academically? Well, we're going back to college on Monday. So lessons will start uh, on Tuesday morning and we expect everybody to be uh, face to face if they are in London or logging in if they're not yet. And we obviously encourage all our students to come back as soon as possible because we will be carrying on with face to face teaching and much better, much more profitable for the students. And we want them to be prepared for whatever assessments will come in the summer term. So it's really essential that students who are abroad can come back for the 12th of April or earlier if they can. They could probably do their uh, quarantine during the Easter break, meaning that they will be able to practice and uh, have whatever sort of extra support that they will need. Lovely, thank you. Um, and the academic year is going to, is it going to change at all in its duration? I know that we would, uh, with examination years, there would potentially be a study leave period or uh, the exam period itself. Has the year changed at all for any of the uh, for any of the students? The the length of the year. No, um, what we will do is try to maximise the teaching time, and um, we will sort of we'll try to teach the students right until the end of the term, we have to obviously sort of send our grades uh, in early or mid June. So we will not finish earlier and we will not sort of allow the year 12 to go back before the end of term of the summer term, because we've got quite a lot of essential tasks to be done before that, especially UCAS. Absolutely, and that actually leads me on to another uh, to a question 
on UCAS and on university applications for the year 12s in particular who are going to be uh, beginning that process of university applications. Um, when does that begin? It begins from next week onwards. We'll have a series of uh, activities for the students. And obviously what we're aiming at is for all the year 12 to have registered with UCAS before the summer. And we'll have a devoted uh, couple of uh, half days in June for that particular purpose. So it's very essential that the students stay because we will have a series of um, uh, training for the students and they will be already sort of beginning to draft their personal statements. Lovely. And just to uh, just to clarify that the the UCAS application itself is a process that they can do online uh, via the UCAS website. Uh, so they would get registered for that before the end of this year and start that process quite soon. Uh, excellent. Uh, a question that I can probably answer actually is just uh, to clarify the date of the Easter break. So we break up and please, if I'm absolutely getting this wrong, someone interrupt me very quickly. Um, but we break up on Friday the 26th of March and we come back on Monday the 12th of April. Uh, that is the break for Easter. Uh, just a reminder that the Q&A is uh, open and you can pop uh, your questions in there and I will be keeping an eye on that and answering. I'm going to go over to that now and see if we have one. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, this is a question that I might not have the information for and hopefully someone will be able to answer this. Uh, can a student uh, have five days of the isolation and then go to the airport to get the test there because it is, it's cheaper at the airports, uh, apparently. Um, if, it, uh, go for it, James. Uh, so the day five test to release early uh, has to be from one of the government approved providers, which you can see on the government's website. Uh, you're allowed to travel to take a test. So if you are going to an approved center, you can do that. It's not just a case of going to any PCR provider. So you do need to make sure it's the correct, uh, well, one from the correct list. Uh, so you can either have that sent to you or you can go to a test center. You advise not to use public transport wherever possible uh, and obviously try to limit any contact. But you are allowed to go out to get a test, uh, but it has to be from the approved test providers for it to count your day five test release early. Thank you, James. That, uh, <laughs> that, that was much more information than I had there, so I appreciate that. Um, and then a question about the students uh, testing at home. Um, how often should the students carry out the lateral flow tests at home? Is it on that same uh, every three to five days timetable? Twice, Twice, Twice a week. A week. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when they are doing the lateral flow tests at home, it is twice a week if anyone else yeah. has full, any questions full details please. full details are given in the home test kits um which uh which will give details of when to test how to test etc lovely thank you we are at the end of the questions that have been provided so i'm going to i'm going to talk for a moment just to see if uh just to give you guys a, a bit of time to add any questions you have now uh, and open up to the panel if anyone wants to pass on any particular information uh to the parents in the room now would be a moment to do it if there's anything we think that we've missed or you want to make uh make sure they know go for it Irfan. Yeah, I'd just like to reiterate uh, to parents and to reassure parents uh, that the college continues to remain safe. We've had uh, our borders, as I've said, since Christmas uh, and they've stayed and uh, they've been uh, tested, etc. Uh, and have remained safe within the, uh, uh, within the college. And of course, all the restrictions are still in place. We are still in national lockdown. Uh, so, you know, so no, um, you know, restaurants and, uh, and bars and pubs and all that sort of stuff is not open. No entertainment venues. So we're still in national lockdown. Uh, we have been, uh, as a slow uh, opening now of restrictions, uh, schools are, are allowed to go back, so we still need to adhere to all the uh, COVID measures put in place. Uh, and as you know, from our opening back in August, uh, we have ensured that we continue uh, to provide a safe and secure place at college where hand sanitizers are available. Uh, we have a supply of masks as well, uh, disposable masks. Uh, we also have uh, plenty of 
uh, visors as well for staff to wear uh, while they're teaching. Uh, but the rules that have changed now uh, on coming back uh, to school during this period of national lockdown is that masks are mandatory. And this has been the case at DLD since uh, September uh, when we came back last year. So please, can I ask you to reiterate that with your sons and daughters to continue uh, to wear their masks and their lanyard while they're at it for security reasons, uh, but to make sure that they wear uh, their masks uh, if social distancing is not possible. Masks will be worn in class if social distancing is not possible, but of course masks won't be uh, worn while they're eating uh, or they're drinking in the global kitchen or grumpy mule respectively. Uh, perspect screens are in place and social distancing uh, is in place within the global kitchen, which is our dining facility, uh, and the grumpy mule, which is our coffee shop, and so all of those uh, are, have been socially distanced and markers, appropriate markers have been put in place. We have a one-way system in school as well. And there's regular cleaning of all the common touch points as well. And classes uh, at the end of each class, uh, they're wiped down as well, uh, ready for the next class. So uh, please rest assured that everything has been uh, I am not sure if that's myself or for everyone, um, but I will I will jump jump in uh, just to take over there. Um, got a question for James. James, uh, will the borders be uh, tested on the same twice a week schedule? Yeah, so the borders will start their um, three lock this Friday, uh, and they will. Um, that's the same as everyone else does. Once they've done those three tests, just like everyone else, they'll have the home testing kit and they'll be doing those same two tests in boarding. The only people that won't be doing uh, those tests, if you have had a positive PCR test, you shouldn't do the lateral flow test for 90 days after your positive PCR test. Uh, but other than that, everyone else is absolutely fine to do the tests and in boarding we'll do the tests just like people at home are doing the tests. Lovely. Can I ask you just to just to re repeat that for a, a, a double bit of clarity? If you have had a positive PCR test, uh, yeah, that's the one that you, that you send off. There's a period of time when you don't do the lateral flow tests. That's right. Yeah. So the positive PCR test, which says basically you've had COVID, uh, if you have one of those for the next ninety days, if you take a lateral flow test, there's a risk of a double, uh, sorry, a false positive. So the PCR test is more accurate to test. So obviously that would always pick it up. The only time you would take the lateral flow test within that 90 days is if you develop new symptoms. So if you develop new symptoms, you should take it. If you haven't got any symptoms, we've only just had COVID, don't keep taking the test. Lovely, thank, thank you, James, that, that clarifies that. Um, I have a question for Tom. Uh, Tom, welcome. Uh, this is a question about the return of sports and co-curricular activities. Is there, a, is there a, a process for that, a timetable for that? Are they all coming in day one or uh, can, you, can you fill us in? Yeah, so, so obviously extracurricular activities are a, a part and parcel and, and really um, an important part of making sure you know, everyone's starting to connect again. Um, so, you know, from the Tuesday, you know, when, once uh, students are starting to come back into college, uh, we will be obviously kind of moving forward and continuing with those extracurricular activities that those students signed up to um, prior to lockdown uh, in, in December. Um, and obviously where possible, I think, you know, obviously there are a number of different sports that we offer uh, at DLD. Uh, and obviously, you know, in terms of competitive sport and things like that, we still haven't yet got the kind of... Uh, the go ahead to go for, for you know, obviously competitive sport, but there is training that, that people can do. Um, and certainly in terms of sports, we'll be, uh, we'll be where we can, obviously uh, making sure we can accommodate that. But like I said, extracurricular is, um, is such an important part of, of the college. Uh, and it's part of actually just, you know, coming back to, uh, you know, make sure that we, we, we're doing everything that we normally would be doing uh, as much as we possibly can. So uh, I, hope, I hope that answers that question. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we're getting close to uh, six o'clock. Uh, we're very, very grateful for everyone who comes in and asks questions at these. Uh, this is being recorded and so it will be passed on and handed out to uh, other parents so that uh, people who weren't able to make it here either because they're you know, working harder in a different time zone will have an opportunity to get these questions. So anyone who's asked a question, uh, thank you. Uh, you're asking it for everyone. 
Um, Erfan has re returned, so I'll just make sure before I before I uh, uh, sign us off that uh, that he doesn't he, he would like to add anything else. Erfan, I was just about to uh, wrap everything up here, uh, but if there we know we missed the end of you, I'm going to be that person and say, Erfan, you're on mute. <laughs> Oh, can you hear there me? There we are. Yes, thank you. Oh, there you. we go. Thank you very much. And, and, and apologies, parents and guardians uh, who are out there, uh, internet, Wi-Fi battles, etc. But uh, no, can I just say a huge, huge thank you to Mark uh, for organising this uh, Q&A uh, for us, to all the parents and guardians and agents uh, who've attended this evening. I uh, hope that we've given you the reassurances that you need with regards how uh, the procedures that we've put in place to ensure that your son and daughter remain safe uh, with us when they start school on Monday. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, but I look forward to welcoming back your uh, sons and daughters to DLD College London on Monday. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. Uh, thank you very much to my ELT team who have been an absolute fantastic support throughout the course of this lockdown. Uh, and of course, thank you to you. Mark. And uh, on that note, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And we do really appreciate a bunch of you have put thanks in the chat. And we really do appreciate hearing that as well. We are doing everything we absolutely can uh, to make sure that uh, returning to college is as seamless and as safe as it can be for everyone. Uh, that's all for today. So uh, if I can say thank you to Erfan, to James, to Marido, to Tom, and to Gareth for answering questions and for making themselves available. Uh, and thank you to everyone for popping in and asking the questions. We'll put a copy of this out for everyone as soon as we can. Uh, have a good evening, everyone, and uh, excited to be going back to school. Good night. Bye. Take care.